Hey guys, it's Brandon Bridges with Local Technology Solution here once again with the HP M01-1024 uh, desktop computer, uh, the machine that was uh, recently at Best Buy on sale for a really great price, $450 plus tax and shipping. It has since gone up, and in my first video I discussed and uh, addressed a lot of the design flaws that I felt this machine had. And uh, right now, I'm uh, going to show you guys uh, uh, one of the solutions that I have uh, implemented to uh, solve that problem and uh, talk about some of the other features and some of my other opinions uh, after that first video has been made. Uh, if you take a look here, I'm going to go back in. Uh, I've got the CPU stressed out right now. Uh, it's at 100% uh, usage. It's over 4 gigahertz. That's great. I've got CPU-Z running. Uh, I've got it um, taxing the processor out. Uh, if you take a look, uh, you can take a look down there at the uh, GPU temperature. And since it's actually an APU, that's a uh, temperature that's indicative of uh, the processor's processor's temperature as well. It's sitting at about 42 degrees Celsius right now. It's really good. Uh, one of the uh, things that I discussed uh, in my initial video about this machine is the fact that the CPU cooler that it comes with is not right for the system. Uh, if you didn't see my first video, whenever this machine ships, it ships with an Intel-based CPU cooler. It has the same mounting pattern as an Intel-based CPU, and it has a 45-watt TDP. And what that means is, is that the heat sink, the cooler, is designed to cool a processor that puts off 45 watts worth of heat. And the Ryzen 7 4700G processor that comes in this machine actually has a 65 watt TDP. So what we have there is a mismatch between the actual heat generated by the processor and the ability to cool that heat from the uh, CPU cooler. So uh, it's, it's also very interesting. I guess the only thing I can think is that HP did this to save money in the long run you know, it does have the same mounting pattern as an Intel heatsink. And uh, so what I've done to address this issue is I've installed a custom water cooling closed loop kit from Ace Tech. I might have said that wrong. It's A-S-E-T-E-K. Uh, this fan in this uh, cooler back here is a 92 millimeter radiator, and that's a Noctua. Uh, that's a Noctua 92 millimeter PWM fan. It's uh, one of the highest flow fans they have um, in that form factor. What I ended up doing, I, I discovered a lot whenever I ended up water cooling this machine. Uh, it all fits in there just fine. I'll uh, take a little bit look in there. The, the hoses are routed a little bit funky and it took a while after I turned it on for the uh, air to uh, come to the top of the radiator, but uh, everything does fit in there. Uh, what you do have to do is you can't remove the water pump and the water, you know, the water pump water block assembly with uh, the radiator still in the machine. What you have to do is you have to seat it in there and then you have to install this piece. Uh, the kit from Ace Tech actually comes with an assortment of screws, but they recommend using a nacho fan that's 15 millimeters deep and i went with a 25 millimeter deep fan because the flow on this uh this deeper fan here is a little bit better and since i was going from having a fan on the processor and the back of the case to just having one fan for the whole system i wanted a nice quiet fan that also had a lot of uh air moving potential. Uh, this case doesn't have any provisions in the front for another fan if you wanted to run one. Uh, what I ended up doing here is this fan right here is actually, oh, this fan right here is actually connected to the CPU fan header. The, uh, the case fan header, there's a case fan header. If you look right back behind here, probably can't see it right now, but uh, that case fan header, the uh, computer, I hooked that up to the water pump for this cooling kit and it doesn't provide enough power to power the, uh, the water pump inside of that water pump, water block combo. And uh, so what I ended up having to do, I bought another Noctua piece. It was a SATA to fan uh, power adapter. So this machine does have a, uh, SATA, a SATA power connector in here. It's a, it's a four pin Molex that breaks out into two SATA connectors. And since I don't have a mechanical hard drive in here and I don't have a disk drive, I was able to actually connect that water pump to a SATA power connector and it's able to power that pump at full speed. Uh, I'm gonna pause for a moment and let you guys listen. It's very quiet especially with the side cover on it. It's a lot quieter than it was. Um, you know, we're letting it run here. It's running. It's, uh, you know, I started this test probably two minutes after the computer booted up and it's been running for almost uh, 15 minutes here in the, uh, the GPU, which is, you know, like I said, the APU, the com combination processor and graphics card is still running at uh, 41 to 42 degrees Celsius, which is great. Uh, trying to tax this processor. Uh, one of the most interesting things that I found with this computer, uh, the power supply here is a, uh, 
proprietary form factor. A buddy of mine had an HP game and it comes in the same form factor with a little bit hotter power supply. It was a direct fit, but one of the, one of the things about that that I did want to discuss is that that power supply is not readily available. Uh, either from HP or from the aftermarket. I think I found one place that was selling for $150. But, you know, the biggest draw for this machine to begin with was for budget-conscious individuals that wanted a nice hot processor. And I'm still going to stand by my first opinion that this machine is not really worth buying just for the processor. Um, you know, there's not anything that it really does really well. Um, you know, it's a nice, fast, quick computer. Uh, at the current price, which I think is almost $600, would I buy it just to use? I would say probably not. Uh, you know, a lot of the gamers on YouTube, you know, it's kind of almost almost evolved into a meme. Uh, they say, well, you know, go buy a Dell Optiplex. Go buy a Dell Optiplex. That's just really not a bad idea. You can get a 30-50, uh, 50-50, or a 70-50. They come with an NVMe slot in them already. They, of course, have Intel processors, but they work great. They're built great. Um, you know, you can get a tower form factor like this, and uh, you can uh, put an external graphics card in it. I'm pretty sure that they have a standard power supply. I might be wrong on that, but uh, if you can see here... I did bust out those back uh, slots. What I did do and what did work is I had an EVGA 1050 TISC card, four gigs, that did not require any kind of external power. And I plugged it in and I installed the drivers and it worked and it worked great. It was a great external card. Um, that's one thing that I will say. If you do have a video card that's bus powered with that 75 watts that the bus of this uh, the, uh, that the PCI bus can can deliver, uh, you know, you can you can use that and it'll work just fine. Uh, you know, as far as you know, a lot of people are probably going to ask, you know, oh, well, I can can I tap into that SATA connection over there? That SATA connection you're talking about? Can I custom solder something up and build an adapter to power a video card? I would say that that would probably not be the best idea, uh, but you could probably do it. Uh, I'm sure I, I know you could do it, but uh, would it work? Would it work all that well? I just really couldn't say from here. You know, I did a, a power add up, especially with this water cooler here. Um, you know, we're probably getting pretty close to, you know, 90 to 100 watts at least of uh, use from this car, this this power supply. And, you know, I never really taxed that 1050 Ti, but, um, you know, I would assume that if, if the water cooler and, and the 1050 Ti and the computer was all being stressed at the same time, it put a, a significant load on that power supply. So we're still going here. The temps have actually dropped to 40 to 41 degrees Celsius. Uh, one thing, another thing that was interesting about this computer is with the 4700G processor, that PCI bus is not PCI Express 4. It's still PCI Express 3.0. So, you know, some somebody out there decided that they wanted to use one of these uh, 4700Gs with something like a 3060 card or something along those lines, then you're not going to be able to realize the full benefit and potential of that card because of the limitations of the PCI Express 3 bus. And uh, another thing, interesting thing I looked into, I was on uh, CPUZ and I actually saw that the interface between the processor and the graphics card inside the APU is actually PCI 4. So uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's an interesting processor and it's an interesting computer, you know, just to kind of settle everything. You know, the cooler that I put in here is an a ASE Tech, A-S-E-T-E-K, 645LT. It's like a hundred bucks. Mounts with the Intel flange. Have to buy your own fan. I actually had to buy some separate hardware to mount that 25 millimeter deep fan, but it does work. Uh, you know, going forward, if you wanted to beef this guy up, I'd uh, go to two sticks of RAM instead of the one it comes with since it's got shared graphics. Um, the solid state drive, I don't have any qualms about. Uh, I do not know. I, I would assume that that was probably also PCI, PCI Express 3.0. So you're probably not going to realize any of the advantage of four. Uh, that's one of the things, you know, I just wonder, you know, if you go out and you built your own computer sans graphics card, I would say go with a Ryzen 5 3600 and something like a B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard, throw 16 gigs of RAM in there and build it out. And you could probably come up if you wanted to just throw some small placeholder card like a GT 710 in there until graphics card pr prices come down. I would just say that you would probably be better off building your own computer uh, unless you have some some inherent need or want just to have the 4700G. Uh, a 1050, not a 1050 Ti, a 1050 would wipe the floor with the internal graphics of this machine. Um, it's not going to be a processor or a machine that you would consider to be a replacement to satisfy the need for better graphics right now with all the graphics cards being so expensive. You know, you would be better off getting a 1050 or a 1050 Ti and throwing it in an Optiplex. Uh, you know, this machine, it's its not a bad machine for what it is, but, you know, it's just not something that I could recommend in the long term for somebody to purchase and have. You know, I actually had to put a motherboard in this computer. I uh, started playing around and tried to force a BIOS from a similar HP machine that had uh, the Gen 3 micro code on it so I could use the 3600 in it, and it bricked the motherboard, and I was able to 
purchase a new motherboard from a guy that was parting them out on eBay, but word of the wise, HP does not release drivers and they do not release any kind of BIOS for this computer. Uh, I know that you can do recovery, but I contacted support and they wanted me to send the whole machine in and, uh, you know, running that water, water cooling system right there. I don't think they'd be too happy with uh, what ended up happening. So I just bought the motherboard myself and ate it. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video and uh, let me know your thoughts on what I've discussed today. Thank you.